So I will main it, wait a minute and we'll get started. Good morning, everyone. Uh, for some reason, Facebook did not like me using that song, so I will not play it again. <laughs> it was Mercy Me, Word of God Speak. Uh, and for some reason, they, they don't usually do that, but they did that today. So I'm going to wait a couple minutes till I see everybody back on, and we'll get started again um, without the music this time. Uh, Word of God Speak was a really good uh, song because we're going to be talking about, um, today, we're going to be talking about um, music and, and <laughs> which is got cut off. But anyway, we're going to be talking about music today, but not so much the words, uh, but the melody. And so I'm glad you guys are all here. In a minute, I'll say good morning to all of you. I hope you're having a blessed day. I don't usually get to be with you on Friday, uh, so it's nice to be able to be here with you today. Um, and uh, Hillary will be with you twice next week, so you get to see her twice. Um, but for today, I am with you. So let's get started. Um, and then today, we're looking at John, the Gospel of John, chapter 10. And um, specifically, I'm looking at verses, um, probably I'll start with verse 25 through verses 28. Verse 25 through 28. So as you're opening up in your Bibles to verse 25, John 25, let me say good morning to you all. Good morning, Minda. And yes, good morning again. Good morning, Minda and Gail. I'm glad you made it, and I'm glad you made it back on. Uh, I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer today. Good morning, Michelle, and good morning, Daniel. I'm glad you're back, too, um, and holding you in prayer today. Good morning, Barbara and Donna. I am glad you're here holding you in prayer today. Good morning, Genevieve, and good morning, Esther. Welcome. I'm glad you're here as well holding you in prayer today. Good morning, Margaret, and good morning, Betty. I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer today. Good morning, Renetta and Vinette, holding you in prayer. I'm glad you're here too. And good morning, Myrna and Augusta. Welcome, holding you in prayer as we start off this day together. It is good to be with all of you on this Friday, praying that your weekend will be a blessed one. So today we're looking at John 10, verses 25 through 28. And the title of today's devotion is Grace Lets Us Hum the Parts of Our Lives We Don't Understand Yet While We Figure Out the Words. Yet. Today's a day, so I don't know what I just set off, but I, I, what I said, but I must have set off one of my devices in the other room. But anyway, um, let's let's take a look at John ten as you're looking at as you're opening up to John ten. <laughs> my name is Cindy Stauffer, and I am blessed to serve as the pastor at the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick, and it is good to be with you this morning as we start our day together. Um, so let's look at John ten verses 25 through 28. And this is what it says. Jesus said, I have told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. So at the beginning of this, uh, in verse 25, Jesus is talking to, um, uh, he's in the, the, the in the temple and uh, there are some Jews that are asking him questions 
and he and you can hear his frustration but the what the focus I want you to hear is he says my sheep hear my voice I know them and they follow me so today's devotion I'm gonna say it softly so I don't set off another device grace lets us hum the parts of our lives we don't understand yet while we figure out the words. And this comes from Bob Goff's book, Live in Grace and Walk in Love. And this is what he says. He says, I have a few friends who are great at playing instruments and writing songs. And they perform on stages and compose masterpieces on their pianos and guitars. And whenever I go to one of their concerts, their music seems so effortless, like the songs just burst out of them. One time, I asked one of these friends what it was like to write a hit song that everybody sang along to. When he told me about his process, I was really surprised. He said his songs usually started out with a vague melody or a series of chords. And while he drove around, got the car washed, took a walk or made dinner, he would have these notes in his head and start building on them, thinking about them, humming along without a clear sense of how they might become a song. He wasn't trying to finish the song all at once. He was just living with it. This reminded me of a time we took hundreds of kazoos to the school that we built in Gulu, Uganda for kids who were, who were the first generation after a 25 year civil war had ended. At the beginning, all the random blowing sounded like the stuff of Beethoven's nightmares. But then the students started suggesting songs for all of us to play along to. There are so many language, there were so many languages and cultures um, represented in the room. Deciding on a song would have only solved half the issue because everyone would be singing different words to it in their traditional languages. But with the kazoos, we didn't have to know the words. We just blew a tune we all knew and the music did the translating for us. Maybe you don't know the words to the song that God is creating in your life. Don't sweat it, just give it some time. Drive around with it. Go to the car wash with it. Take a walk, make dinner, live with it for a while, and ask God to give you the words later. And the question today is, what words is God speaking to you? So, um, as a pastor, we use words all the time. We write words, we preach words, we call people up and talk with people. I mean, words are like at the core of everything we do. And I know that we've talked about how powerful words, words have the ability to heal and to harm. And um, at the same time, I'm, I'm reminded of like, the scripture that calls us that sometimes in our prayer we have no words and and all we can do is groan inwardly groan that's all that can come out right and i think about that often because there's so many times in my own prayer life when i have lost the words and yet i know that god knows exactly what's working through in my heart and i don't need the words or I'm reminded of the scripture that tells us um, that there will be a time when words will cease. Um, and that scripture uh, from uh, 1 Corinthians 13 was the scripture I used 
for my mother's um, memorial service when I, uh, not her funeral, it was, a, it was a couple months later, we had a memorial service and I preached on that, the love passage in 1 Corinthians. And then I talked about how my mom, and maybe I've shared this with you, but it's been a long while, so I feel like we all have like a vague memory of things. But my mom was words, always words, 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 words. But the other day I told you there was a tie year when she had no words and she used her eyes, right? Her eyes were the, the thing that kept me in control as a two-year-old causing wreaking havoc in the house. She'd look at me and I knew I needed to be silent. So there was a year she didn't have words. But when she developed cancer, uh, the cancer landed in her brain well, she had cancer several times, but the last time it was in her brain and it was right on the part of the brain where speech is. And so the first thing that she lost was her ability to talk. And there were no words. There were no words. And when there were no words, the only thing that was left was love. And the eyes, I think the eyes have such power because they tell another person without words. You can see in someone's eyes when they love and when they don't love. You can see almost into the soul through the eyes. And so in today's passage, um, you know, in this today's devotion, he's talking about our need to have everything figured out, to be able to articulate where we're going and how we're going and what will happen next. And, and sometimes there are no words yet and that is okay. And maybe the words might never fully come, but the true understanding, the true knowing of, of God's presence in our life, the true knowing of our relationships to one another has nothing to do with words. You know it when you've sat alone with someone who loves you and they can just sit with you for a whole hour or two and say nothing but just express their love by being present with you. That is what God does for us. And sometimes God speaks to us in words, but sometimes God just speaks to us in presence. And so I wonder what it would be like today, even as I share words with you, because I don't think you want to just look at me sitting here on the screen. Um, I wonder what it would be like today to not focus so much on our words and spend a little more time listening and using uh, the gift of presence, God's presence with us and with one another. Because I know it's not the words that I remember, it's the times that somebody held my hand or gave me a big hug or just sat with me while I cried. So today, I'm gonna move, I'm not gonna use that question. Today, how will you let your very presence, God's presence with you, speak in volume, speak more powerfully than the words that come out of our mouth? So, let's pray. God of grace, who creates the melodies in our lives, who brings joy and comfort, who tells us, not through words, but through presence, that we are beloved. We come to you today 
aware that too often we have leaned on words to understand ourselves, to understand you, to understand our neighbor. And maybe sometimes it is more in the silence. In the presence of one another. In the way that we look at one another and listen to one another that we truly experience the fullness of the song you have for us. And so this day, Lord, help us not to put so much emphasis on the words and instead spend time being present to let our, our eyes and our our body presence with one another, speak more than the things that come out of our mouth. Lead us this day. Help us to listen more fully and to join the melody, not with words, but with your very presence. Lord, I lift up each person on the call today that they will know in the silent moments that they are loved. We lift all of this up together as we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So today on this Friday, how will you express and how will you hear and experience God's love? And how will you share that without words today? God loves you. God loves you. And so do I. Have a blessed day. I will see you tomorrow on Saturday morning and uh, I'll see you then. Bye friends.